My name's Big Boss Benny and I'm here to talk about the INFP subtypes from the ESTJ perspective. Okay, so listen up now, losers. First and foremost, INFPs can be grouped into four different subtypes. First, we have the one who is lazy. Second, we have the one that constantly procrastinates. Third, we have the one that never does what they're told. And fourth, we have the one with the student loan of one million dollars. Hey everyone, sorry, I'm back. It's Eric again, here to talk about INFP subtypes. Don't listen to that douchebag from before. I have some more positive news. First and foremost, INFPs are awesome. Did you know INFPs are the number one group to tune into my YouTube videos and to browse my website? Did you know my articles and videos on INFPs are some of the most popular I made on this channel? To celebrate that and to say thank you to all of you, I have decided to make this the INFP Appreciation Month. So take the time down below and write something positive about INFPs, something you like about INFPs. Spread some love and let's get to it. Let's start talking about INFPs for different subtypes. First, we have the introverted subtype INFP. Using primarily introverted intuition and introverted feeling, this character is grounded and securing themselves. They know themselves, they know and understand the world around them, they are insightful and wise, they are understanding, accepting, they are forgiving, they are balanced, peaceful and calm. They are satisfied with themselves and they are accepting and understanding of other people. They are normally the least likely INFP personnel type to hold judgment towards other people, to have uh, negative opinions about other people. No, most of the time they accept and understand the world as it is, without trying to change it. Moving on, we have the intuitive subtype INFP. The intuitive subtype INFP has high introverted intuition and intuitive perceiving. That means they have some similarities with the introvert, but also some similarities with the perceiving subtype INFP. They are people that learn quickly and they are always thinking about various theories and mysteries. They are inquisitive, curious, always searching for information, 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 ideas, ideas, ideas. They think about things and then they think about things from another angle and then from another one. The goal is to learn as much as possible as every, uh, about everything. At the same time, this type can struggle with the lack of judgment. They might not understand what's right or wrong. They might not even think about if something is right and wrong because they are so caught up in this possibility of what if it's true and how does it work and what is on the other side of that door. I really have to know no matter what shoes I have to step on or what mistakes I could make in the process. So curiosity and energy and a lot of hobbies. These are hallmark indicators of this subtype. Third, the feeling subtype INFP. This subtype is known for strong principles, moral judgment, and a strong self-awareness. They know themselves, they know what's right and wrong, they have their feet on the ground, they are idealistic, they are innocent, they are hopelessly naive and positive. They see the world as it could be at its best. They have a utopian idealism. They are individualistic and authentic. They commit fully to things. They have strong beliefs that are hard to shake or compromise on. They have strong sense of motivation, a strong sense of what must be done or what is most important. They protect the values that they care most about and they will speak out if they believe something is wrong. Now these moral beliefs, this strong feeling that something is right and something is wrong, this strong clinging to self and this uh, desire to always be true to yourself can keep you from trying out new things or from exploring new dimensions, from seeing things from different perspectives. And that's why this type often lacks the most in intuition. Finally, we have the perceiving subtype INFP, a combination of the feeling types, feeling perceiving, and the intuitive types, intuitive perceiving. This is a type characterized by adaptability, a strong sense of 
capability and a strong sense of skillfulness. Being able to handle whatever life throws at you. The sign of peace always focused on what's next. They're always thinking about and anticipating possibilities. They think about what could happen, how things could happen, in what way. And so they are constantly focused on, you know, what could I say next? Who could I do uh, meet next? What could I do next? What could uh, this person say at this point of time? How would this person respond if I did that? And because of this, this is a person with a strong self-control and a strong sense of confidence. This person believes fully in themselves and their own ideas. They are rebellious. They go against the flow and they stand up for themselves and say what they feel is most important and most true. They are the people that will always go their own way and so they can be described as rebellious. The perceiving subtype can live life in a bit of a rush and that can cause them to do some thoughtless things and to rush into a situation without thinking it through clearly. Unlike the introverted subtype that always seeks to have their feet on the ground, the perceiving subtype is so much in a rush they might jump into a situation with a lack of information or knowledge. That also means that they can be prone to judgment about other people. Sometimes they can become concerned with how special they are or how unique they are and how everyone else around them is mindless sheep, you know. They can get so caught up in this feeling of their own strength and ability that they can feel other people are incompetent and they must do everything on their own. So that's a hallmark of the perceiving subtype INFP. Similarly, the introverted subtype INFP can have the opposite problem. They can be passive or immobile. They can be uh, unadaptable to new ideas and to change. They might not anticipate or respond quickly enough to something that happens. They are often regarded as slow moving or too careful or too cautious. They wait and see what happens. They let other people rush ahead. They sometimes wait too long if there is a new opportunity that presents itself and they sometimes avoid relationships or bonds. They can sometimes fear overwhelm, they can sometimes fear conflict or instability. These are things the perceiving subtype doesn't fear at all. They can often even accept conflict as something necessary to form deeper bonds and relationships. And they will say what's on their mind and they will speak their own truth, even if they haven't thought it out clearly or don't know exactly what they want to say or get with something yet. The intuitive subtype can struggle with a lack of motivation sometimes, and other times they can struggle with irresponsibility. You might notice that as an intuitive subtype, you neglect thinking about career and goals and long-term prospects. Where am I going with everything? Why am I doing it? What's the point of it? Often it can be that you're just so curious, you're just so immersed with something, you can't stop yourself from doing it, you don't know what the point of it is, you don't know if there is any value to doing it or studying it or learning about it. We don't even know if you want to work with it or know, if you just want to know it for the sake of knowing it. Sometimes this type can get bored of something as soon as they've figured out everything about it. And that can mean they jump from field to field, learning everything and then giving up and then moving on to the next curious thing. So this type needs something that is endlessly intellectually stimulating, something that will constantly bring up something new. This type needs novelty every day to sh uh, be creative outlet for this type and if there is no creative outlet no room for change no room for new thinking this is gonna bore them very quickly the feeling subtype INFP is the most cause oriented and goal oriented they feel the strongest that things have to be done the world needs to change things need to be different they have a strong sense of a utopia that they want to realize and they must speak out they must share what they feel. They must do something. And that means this type is constantly focused on keeping and maintaining and pushing their motivation. If they lose their motivation at task or if it starts to become more grayed out or blurred or if they start wondering or doubting their own crusade or their own quest, it, this can be very numbing to this type because this type really needs to believe in something. They really need to stay hopeful or optimistic about something if they start to feel like a campaign or a project isn't going to make the world a better place if they start to doubt themselves they might very well move on to the next thing the next challenge the next thing that could be an opportunity or a channel for their idealism 
Okay, so those are the four INFP subtypes the way I see it. INFPs have four subtypes, the introvert using introverted intuition and introverted feeling, the intuitive using introverted intuition and intuitive perceiving, the feeling type, subtype using feeling perceiving and introverted feeling, and finally the perceiving subtype using feeling perceiving and intuitive perceiving. So everyone has a subtype based on two cognitive functions that they use more than any other cognitive functions. That's the way I see it right now at this very moment. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know as well which subtype you relate to the most and what this says about you as a person.